This is BBC One. Now the news with Peter Sissons. It's 10 o'clock. Bush declares war on the terrorists. NATO pledges it's their flight too. Thousands lie under the rubble, hundreds of British among them. The moment the attack began, the White House was also a target. Federal investigators uncover vital clues but make no arrests. Blair recalls Parliament to discuss the emergency. He says the democratic world is at risk. Good evening, the day after. And the more America finds out about what happened yesterday, the worse it gets for Americans to bear. Their president calls the events acts of war. For individual families, it's the agony of the last harrowing phone calls from loved ones on the hijacked aircraft. New pictures of the horror fuel the nation's anger and feed the collective grief at still not knowing how many thousands have died. In New York right now, the dust is gradually settling to expose a massive wasteland where the pride of the city once stood. One fireman spoke of losing count of the dead people he saw. It's absolutely worse, he said, than you can ever imagine. In Washington, smoke still drifts from the Pentagon. This evening, events are moving rapidly. NATO has declared an attack on America is an attack on all its members. There's been a flurry of activity by heavily armed federal agents. The Attorney General said some of the suspected hijackers were trained as pilots in the United States. Here, Tony Blair says hundreds of Britons may be among the dead. And as he recalls Parliament, says fighting terrorism is now a common cause. Our first report on day two of America's terrorist nightmare is from James Robbins. Dumar, Jeff Randall, thank you both. Newsnight continues on BBC Two now, but from the 10 o'clock news, good night. <laughs>